After their shopping trip and events of the previous day with drunk getting married to two Oni women, one including the brothel owner, everyone is in high spirits as they await their armours and other such things to be completed. But no one is as excited as Auspicious. On the same night of drunk getting married, Auspicious has gotten a Minotaur woman to agree to a morning breakfast date with him, and the skeleton is simply besides himself with excitement. First, however, cannot summon such excitement, as Rowdy and Agile show up as soon as the day breaks to drag her off to the boomer. What? <laughs> the plan is to find a long-range weapon that will fit the gnoll's giant hands, where she can easily fit her big, meaty paws <laughs> into and actuate the trigger mechanism without accidentally blowing away the person next to her. If that's going to happen, they rather it happen on purpose rather than coincidence. First is however not game with the idea of waking up three hours earlier than she wanted, and takes a lot of coaxing to even flop halfway out of her little nest that she keeps having to rebuild, since the staff keep taking the blankets away and resetting them in her proper place. Rowdy finally has enough of this, and just picks up first and sets her over his shoulder the gnolls snoring loudly as they walk down the staircase and out into the very early morning. Drunk is there as well, waiting patiently for the barmaid to come out and start serving breakfast, as is suspicious, who is facing the door, sitting in a chair with his hands resting on his pant knee. Furious heads out soon after as well, going to wander off towards the siege weapon camp they never got to visit. Agile and Rowdy, with first over shoulder, make it to the boomer's house about an hour later and knock loudly on the door and keep knocking until the little old man is finally awakened from his gunpowdered slumber and opens the door. What in the Sam hell? You know it's barely daybreak, right? Sheesh! But he opens the door anyway and allows the skeletons inside. First is set down on the floor in which she immediately banks a hard right and Rowdy has to scramble after her and hold her straight by her shoulders as she blinks blearily and sniffs tiredly at the strange smells around her. Where first be? She murmurs groggily, and rubs her palms at her eyes as Rowdy still has to hold her upright. We're at the gun place first. Now, mister, I know full well why you're here. You're hoping to cash in on my idiot son's gift, I'm sure. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, I don't care what that muttonhead said. I'm still king here, and he's just a directorate. Only way you're walking out of here with anything is if coin is spent. Flackin' Booma, <laughs> Agile mutters, and first perks her ears up to this new word despite her exhaustion. Rowdy is also a bit angry at him, because that was in fact his intention, but still manages to corral his anger enough to begin telling the old man what they need. We need a rifle or something short enough that my, um, daughter here... <laughs> First looks up at Rowdy, confused and almost aghast. Can use it without being off balance. And she needs a large trigger as well. The old man gives a hard think and waddles over to his pile of junk and begins rooting around until he finds a shorter flintlock carbine with a long flowing handguard, allowing even an ogre to reach in and grip at the thing. How much does that cost, sir? Rowdy asks, checking first one last time before letting go of her shoulders. She stays put. The old man rubs his knobbly chin a little before struggling and exasperating. Oh, I don't know. Make me an offer. And don't lowball me. I know what I got here. Agile mutters some more about boomers and how they should be turned into food, while Rowdy takes the gun from the old man and makes first to try it out. It's short enough that she can control it easier and can almost one-hand it if she really felt like it, and nods at it approvingly. The old man is squinting at first, Tired old eyes, bad eyesight, and morning sand blotting them. Your kid is pretty huge hands. Almost like she's part bugbear. What are you, a bard? First puts her ears back, knowing full well her hands are average in size. <laughs> Rowdy and Agile walk over to the old man to begin negotiations. And the old man is really being a piece of shit about the whole ordeal. First, tired, no breakfast, and barely able to keep her eyes open... Decides, fuck it, I'm walking out with this thing, oh god. Despite bumping off a side table and spending a solid minute struggling to get the knob in the door to turn, she finally opens it and slips out into the morning. Fine, fine, 14 gold. The old man gives up, holding out his liver spot-addled hand. 
Very well, here it is. Come on, Fur... Rowdy has to stop, as he turns around and sees First is gone. And Agile turns as well, seeing a lack of Noel. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, bye! <laughs> Rowdy rattles out as fast as possible before slipping out of the door, with Agile sniffling and walking out behind him. First is sitting outside on a box, playing with her rifle, and checking it out in the morning sun, letting it warm up her fur. Hey, First, is that thing loaded by chance? Agile pipes up. You know, first find out though. And she cocks the hammer back of the rifle. Agile and Rowdy react with the speed of a puppy owner slash toddler parent and are able to not only point the weapon away from the people on the harbour street, but Agile is even able to shove his hand down, catching the hammer before it struck the strike plate. Ow! Agile takes a point of blunt damage and ten points of annoyance. <laughs> Rowdy takes a peek down the barrel and sees he's looking at a round ball. Both skeletons pick up first by the arms and pull her off the barrel and begin to grill her about gun safety as they walk down the road back towards the general store to pick up more gear for her rifle. Furious finds the camp, having jogged most of the way there, and looks around at the scorched and savaged war machines. The once mighty trebuchets are shard and scorched in many places, if not blown apart completely, and the trench lines are filled with bits of Arderman soldiers. Jeez, Furious mutters, and steps through the old picket lines and trench works that were once the siege weapons camp. It looks as if very powerful battle wizards stepped in after taking advantage of the root created by the skeletons, and took to the camp like gasoline does do a bushfire. Furious can surmise that perhaps it was lightning or fire mages, as some of the bodies were very exploded, as if their blood was boiled so fast that the steam and pressure caused the bodies to pop like a dead animal left on the road in the summer. He takes a look around before seeing a shovel and eyeballs it for a moment before walking over and picking it up, hefting it in his hands. The shovel bits deep in the earth and he is able to dig pretty quickly with the magical strength of undeath. Five men, or at least chunks of men, to a grave and he simply drags them over and tosses them in before shoveling the dirt back on top and beginning another hole. He gets a number of graves in before hearing a rustling in the distance, and he rests the shovel over his shoulder, brushing dirt off his skull. It's not really easy to tell where it's coming from, but it's definitely movement from what he can tell. His boots scoot on the ground as he steps around the war-torn grounds and spies way in the back a bunch of tents, probably where the majority of the troops rested and slept when not on the siege lines. It's a quick walk and soon he's passing rows and rows of mostly unmarred tents. When he poked his head inside, he can see they have been looted, or that the occupant has taken all their gear with them. Either way, it's empty. Hmm, Furious muses, and here's the rustle again. He sees it this time, as the fabric of a tent is pushed from the inside, and the skeleton wanders over, using his shovel to open the flap to the tent as he readies back his steel knuckles. Inside, there's a gasp, and a whirl of movement as the occupant spins round to face the skeleton. Furious clicks his teeth together in thought. Inside is what looks like a 15 to 16 year old boy. He matches the complexion of the soldiers that were there. He is wearing armour and regalia of the soldier as well. A short sword also rests at his hip, but the boy's arms are occupied by a sack full of what appears to be rations or random food bits. Furious and the boys stare at each other before Furious asks him who he is. No one, the boy responds. Where are you from? Um, Skidrithro? Furious doesn't know where that is, but he knows the boy is Otterman's. It appears this tent is empty, he mutters, and slowly pulls away from view. Furious walks back to his grave digging, and he hears the sound of rapid footsteps in the distance, and smiles to himself. No need, he whispers as he drags half of a man to the hole he just dug and tosses the corpse inside. The inn is waking up and standing by her bar is the main barmaid slash innkeeper, holding a mop with a bucket of water beside her. She is angrily staring at Drunk as he noisily eats cereal and drinks beer. And by eat and drink, Drunk is littering the floor with splashes of brew and soggy pieces of grains. But he tips well so the poor beast woman just stares daggers and waits for him to finally finish which she knows won't be any time soon. Her underlings are running out of food and drinks, as the crowd who believe the breakfast of champions is beer have shown up as well. 
and are also taking to eating cereal thanks to drunk starting the trend. Drunk, more or less, holds this pattern for the morning. Auspicious is still watching the door, when he sees a pair of horns in the distance, and rattles giddily. He leaps out of his chair and strides over, opening the door and walking out to meet her. She is wearing a sundress, but oddly also wearing knee-high leather boots that look more for combat than for comfort wear, but Auspicious doesn't notice. Good morning, Auspicious calls out, running over and standing in front of her, looking up at her face. Um, good morning, she says back a little unsure, and nervously rubs at her forearm. So I hear this place has good food and free coffee? For some reason I've never came here to eat. And she kind of perks up to the thought of food. Of course, come on, I promised you breakfast. Auspicious reaches up and takes her arm, which is a little odd because she's almost two to three heads taller than him, but he does his best. The Minotaur woman almost laughs, but is able to keep her composure as Auspicious walks her inside to the table. The innkeeper, starting to try and mop around drunk, snaps her fingers at another Serbian and throws her thumb over her shoulders. The innkeeper's accent is harder than usual, and definitely Serbian. Lada! Take care of them. Oh my god, I fucking can't do it. <laughs> Lara grabs the menu, but her shoes squeak as she stops mid-step when she sees the skeleton talking with a huge minotaur woman. Taishutis <laughs> Shotoli, she mutters, and begins to nervously sweat as she walks up to them. She puts on a brave face, though, and sets a menu down in front of the minotaur. Good morning, <laughs> what can I get you? <laughs> I'm thinking of Borat. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be Borat. Very nice. <laughs> she then sets a menu down in front of Auspicious, but doesn't take her fingers away. She kind of pulls the menu away, goes to put it back, looks over at Drunk, then pulls the menu away fully and tucks it back under her arm. Auspicious doesn't notice. His attention is on the Minotaur. She happily looks over the menu, her ears twitching and tail swishing, before she orders coffee and everything on the menu. Everything on the menu. The, the, yes, I mean yes, of course. Lada bows before running off into the kitchen and rapid Slavic sounding curses are thrown around <laughs> as they have to prepare their entire breakfast menu. That is probably only a single meal for this monster of a woman sitting outside with a literal monster. Auspicious begins to ask the Minotaur about how she got here and she begins to share her story. Well, I sailed to the mainland from Bry, landing down in Rosado, which is kind of in between Serbina and the land of the mountains, which is chock full of these silly little cat people, except they wear much taller hats for some reason. She gestures towards Lada and the innkeeper, who is wringing out her milk and beer laden mop into a bucket. Inside the kitchen, another Serbian is trying to figure out what to serve this beast her coffee in holding up a regular cup. In the distance of the kitchen, male Serbians are bickering over how the hell to get all these plates on a single carrying tray. Nyeh, nyeh, this one! And she holds up a large soup bowl that has a handle on it, and a huge carafe of coffee that usually serves an entire table. Lada, Lada, Lada! <laughs> the Serbian cries out, as she hefts up almost a gallon of coffee and this mug. Lada screeches around the corner, hefting her own giant serving platter with enough food to sedate multiple dwarves. I'm coming, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> the two walk out into the inn and see that the skeleton's other living crew members have come down. Davia Blatt, the taller one always eats too much fruit, Lada growls, but walk over to the Minotaur and the skeleton, and the Minotaur is in the middle of her adventure. So when we were travelling along the mountain ranges of the Loblolly, a stupid name for mountains if you ask me, oh, she claps her hands together looking up at the two Serbians coming towards her. Lada groans as she sets down the platter to start unloading it and the plate's almost covering the entire table. This will definitely help with my workout later. I can rarely afford to eat as much as I should. Her eyes are almost shining as she also sees the giant bowl and Auspicious can tell she usually has to drink from smaller cups. Enjoy your meal, Lada says, and both of them bow down slightly before walking away to take care of Kyla and the group. Oh, my necromancer is over there, and he points at her. Kyla is staring, 
open mouthed and eyebrows furrowed, while her mother is laughing behind her hand. Omen has her hands together under her chin and is saying something to Harla, and the both of them laugh quietly. Kyla sends a message to Auspicious. What the hell are you doing? I'm on a date, duh. She's like ten of you put together. Auspicious waffles his hand at her and she just blinks while moving her head side to side. Very much in a just when it can't get any fucking weirder kind of way. The Minotaur, after making sure all of her foods are not touching and all the plates are arranged in a logical manner, begins cutting small slices of her pancakes. Oh, so she's one of the only people. Feisty people they are. They also share the weird habit of naming their towns and cities after their race, like Heroni, Shashnoni, <laughs> and the Serbians do the same thing too. Kokushnia, Robondia, fuck on and on. Look, like, no fuck. Look, fuck. Barbara, what are you trying to do? I know. Here? Like, anyway, going. we were making our way through the Loblollies, which is lousy with elves, and we have to travel by armored carriage because they would just shit at the carriages. Imagine me just tucked up inside one of those things for days on end. Probably a very tight fit, Auspicious says, which gets a chortle out of the Minotaur woman. Anyway, we made it through there and arrive here, in Talaib. However, I find that not many people want to hire you, and fell into what I do now. Not exactly what I was planning on doing, but the money's good and I'm comfortable. Auspicious is nodding enthusiastically, and begins to tell her about how he was awoken and their journeys thus far. You went into Arderman's territory? That's so brave. And your party killed two paladins? I hope those rumours aren't true. She aldly chews on a slice of rasher, looking up thoughtfully. Rumours? Kyla has been listening in via auspicious and relaying what they've been talking to to the others, but perks up to the word rumours as well. Oh yeah, like they train little kids to be paladins at a young age, but the more pure you are, the better the paladin or something. Because the older you get, the more deviant you get. She wiggles her fingers at Auspicious while grinning. But there are very special holy warriors. And rumour has it that they use them as assassins. And the kids are trained as spies from like almost birth. Some even call them holy grenades because it's rare that their target and themselves survive contact. Kyla breaks a sweat and is pulling at her shirt collar rapidly while Omen chokes on a mouthful of pancakes when she hears what Kyla says. Around this time, Furious has finished his digging and the rest of the group that is out is heading back. Before Auspicious can ask further, the Minotaur woman speaks up. Oh, oh, you do have a Bolemian with you, and points over at Millie, who is happily dancing down the stairs in a town outfit. A what? Bolemians. They're like lifelong enemies of Arderman peoples. They have magical tattoos and everything. Oh, look at her. She looks so happy with that leg. I never even noticed her tattoos before because they were wearing all their gear or being carried around. And her eyes follow Millie as she sits down with the rest of the party over yonder. Auspicious scratches at his bony chin, but hears a gulping noise. He looks up to see the Minotaur woman draining her coffee bowl and also sees she has finished all the food as well, having stacked up plates as she went. Lada, Lada, look! The Serbians look over at the table, now empty of food. Nice as shit though. <laughs> it's all gone. Where did it all go? Both of the Serbians look out in shock before they engage gears to move out and collect the plates. Okay, Lada. Now we can ta- Ah, blat! That one has coffee! Rowdy tips the cup towards his lips and a splash is heard on the floor below him. You know, it felt kind of rude just sitting here eating food in front of you. Um, here. Let me at least try. And she picks up a small sliver of bacon that's left and holds it out to Auspicious. Kyla, Omen, Harla and Millie all lean in and are looking over as Auspicious does his best to lean over and take a bite of the bacon. It just falls out his jaws and the Minotaur woman just snorts in laughter while apologising to Auspicious. He takes it in stride and refills her coffee for her. When behind them, Kyron walks in to take breakfast for the party. Kyron takes one look at Auspicious, picking bacon off his shirt, the woman, and goffs loudly. What are you doing? She's like three of you. If you were a living person, she could lay on you and no one would be able to tell. The Minotaur woman coughs hard and whips a napkin to her face as she struggles to laugh through her coffee, her eyes tearing up despite her painful laughing. Auspicious yells at Kyron while everyone else at the other table laughs and giggles behind their hands. 
The rest of the skeletons walk in and know what's up. But after the Minotaur lady has cleaned herself up and she has embarrassed laughed herself silly, Auspicious asks her if she wants to go out on a walk. She agrees. Auspicious plops a fat 10 gold tip onto the table and the two leave the inn into the bright day outside. The innkeeper yowls and rushes over, bumping into the table and swiftly gathering up all the coins, holding them in her hands and rubbing them on her cheeks while chuckling <laughs> happily. Nay! <laughs> I'll be set for months. Lada and the other Serbians see this and run over, demanding their cut. Chicken has been waiting outside and spooks her, in which she yells at Chicken for being a spooky little bird. <laughs> Even Chicken is intimidated by her size and cars next to Auspicious. Big. <laughs> they continue to talk as they walk and she tells Auspicious that she never thought she would end up here and thought she would be off adventuring. But... After being shot at and constantly dodging pirates all the way to the mainland, I just wanted to be comfortable, you know? I mean, you've described many times how your entire party has almost died or are constantly dodging danger. Auspicious goes on to tell her the good times as well, and she listens intently while walking beside him, her hands together behind her, and he tells them about their plan to take Kyla back to her homeland. Auspicious has been leading her the entire time to show her his cows, but when he shows them to her, She cocks an eyebrow, and the bovines and minotaur look at each other. I see you have particular taste. Oh, God. God. No, 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 Auspicious says, summing up his fox familiar. I just have lots of bodies like this, see? And holds a small bush fox up. Hey, boss, what? Whoa, hey! (laughs) The fox looks up at the tall woman, who leans down and scoops up the little fox in her massive hands. Oh, look at you, you're like a little leaf dog. As the Minotaur woman is playing with the fox familiar, Auspicious is wringing his skeletal hands and looking up at her. He has very, very deep feelings for her and wants to take her on the journey they are about to go on. Uh, hey, she looks down at him while rubbing the fox's leafy ears. Mm Mm-hmm, yes? Do you want to come on the trip with us? You know, an adventure? You said you always wanted to go on one and we can keep you safe. We're getting new armour and new weapons. I've got stronger and new friends. What, um, what do you say? Dice are rolled, and... The Minotaur looks down at him, and her fingers stop rubbing on the fox, and she begins to look uncomfortable. She looks up, and left, then back down at the skeleton. This has been a lovely morning, and you are a very lovely person. As many people wouldn't have the courage to ask me on a date, but I travelled all the way here, and you're heading all the way back to take her home. And I'm comfortable here. I have a place to stay. Good friends. Good money. Um. She reaches up and lightly holds onto one of her horns. I think uh, we should just be friends. Back at the inn, Kyla has told everyone what just happened. And the skeletons all clutch their chest as they feel a tidal wave of emotions roar out through the necronet. And even Kyla feels the punch. Oh no, no, no. She sputters as Auspicious' grief washes over her and she starts crying unwillingly for him because he cannot. That muscly tart just broke his heart! (laughs) The skeletons are all in several stages of grief with Rowdy simply laying on the floor face down and Agile collapsed in a chair and staring at the ceiling. Drunk is just pouring beer onto himself as if trying to drown the sorrow out of his mind with booze. Distant Slavic bleating is heard and the rustling of a bucket. Agile is curled into a ball. Furious has his head in his hands and is rocking back and forth. Auspicious looked down at the ground as the Minotaur woman leaned down and placed the fox in his hands before planting a kiss on top of his skull, rustling the flower crown he wore. I really enjoyed this morning. I hope you have a safe journey, she murmurs, before walking past him and moving off back towards the big spoon. Boss, the fox says, planting a wooden paw on the skeleton's chin and perking up his ears to the skeleton who just stared down at the ground. Hey boss, come on. Let's uh, go check the walls, huh? Cows are doing fine, it says to him and hops down out of his arms, grabbing the hem of his travelling cloak with its rocky teeth and pulling the skeleton any direction but where the woman walked off to. The skeleton shuffles at first but walks on with a fox familiar robotically striding while looking down at the ground. When Auspicious reaches the inn many hours later, Harla is the first to greet him and wraps him up in a mama bear hug. 
his skull pressed hard into your chest. Oh honey, I heard. I'm so sorry. She coos, placing her head on top of his. Auspicious's skeletal shoulders give a tiny shrug, and the hug is joined by Millie and Omen, who just try to make the skeleton feel better. Millie's leg giving a small whirl and hiss as she tries to tiptoe up and fix his flower crown. Kyla and the rest of the lads are sitting sprawled in chairs. For some reason, Rowdy and Agile are smoking, all of them still reeling from Auspicious's typhoon waves of sadness, depression and inner anger, now radiating off him like a bonfire, and Kyla has to keep wiping her eyes while cursing. This, this is going to be difficult, she breathes, as Drunk hands her his tankard, filled to the brim. Oh.